the need to reduce costs. We're seeking input from Albertans on how we can work together to balance our books and position the province for a prosperous future. Since forming government, my colleagues and I have worked hard to improve Alberta's business environment, attract investment, and support job creators. At the start of this year, Alberta was on course and making good progress, not only in terms of economic growth, but also in the responsible use of taxpayer dollars. The four-year fiscal plan that, that we introduced with Budget 2019 was working. Since that time, Alberta has been hit by a very tri a serious triple black swan event. The global economy experienced the largest contraction since the Great Depression. Demand destruction and the oil price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia led to a total collapse in energy prices. And at the same time, we're dealing with the pandemic in our own province. The impacts to Alberta's finances were severe and immediate. We're now facing a $24 billion deficit this year, $17 billion higher than we projected in Budget 2020. Alberta's taxpayer-supported debt is estimated to jump to approximately $99 billion by the end of the fiscal year. Total debt servicing costs are forecast at $2.5 billion for 2020-2021. This is higher than the combined operating expense of 16 out of 20 ministries. These are dollars that should be funding public services, but instead are going to bankers and bondholders. We know that economic growth is an integral part of the solution, and that's why we're working hard to implement Alberta's recovery plan. But we also must ensure that we're delivering government services in the most efficient manner possible. It's clear that the status quo is not sustainable. But this is also a great opportunity to reset our course, not only for the next fiscal plan, but for future generations of Albertans. There will be tough decisions in the short term so we can sustain services into the future. Albertans have demonstrated that they have sound insight in the decisions we must make together to grow our economy, support job creation, and balance the budget. Over the next several weeks, I'll be touring the province, meeting with Albertans to hear their ideas and perspectives about Budget 2021. Beginning today, an online survey will be available on alberta.ca. The survey will be open until December 4th, and I'll also be hosting telephone town halls on November 30th, December 2nd, and 3rd. The telephone town halls, one for Northern, one for Central, and another for Southern Alberta will give Albertans another opportunity to share their ideas directly with me. Every Albertan is dealing with the effects of the massive downturn in our pro uh, province's economy and provincial finances, and Alberta's government needs their perspectives. I encourage everyone across the province to go to alberta.ca to take the survey and find more information on the telephone town halls and in-person town halls. I look forward to listening to Albertans, hearing their ideas, concerns, and thoughts for how we can work together to bring Alberta back to prosperity and set the course for a prosperous future for our children and grandchildren. We have a great task ahead of us, but as I've said before, Albertans have proven time and time again that we're an entrepreneurial and resilient people. Let's come together and face this challenge together and set a new course for Alberta's future. Thank you, and I'm happy to take some questions. So now we'll go to the phones. Um, operator, can you please put through the first caller? Our first question comes from Audrey Nouveau of Radio Canada. Your line is open. Hi, Minister. Uh, my question for you is concerning uh, the aspect with revenues and expenses. Uh, for the last budget, obviously before the pandemic hit, your focus was mostly on trying to reduce expenses instead of growing the revenues, per se, going back to the McKinnon uh, report. However, we've clearly seen a revenue drop because of this uh, oil prices uh, coming down. So what do you expect to be um, putting in this budget on that front for the re growing revenue? Well, we, we've seen significant revenue decline uh, as a result of this great economic challenge. And that's why job number one is growing the economy. That's why we as a government uh, were the first province across Canada to roll out an economic recovery plan. We will not meet our great fiscal challenge uh, and unless we effectively uh, grow this economy, rebuild the economy. 
But yes, our budget 2019, budget 2020 was focused uh, on expenditures and for good reason. As you noted, the McKinnon panel pointed out that we're outliers in our cost of delivering government on a per capita basis. And, uh, and so budget 2019, budget 2020 uh, started us down the path of over, over time aligning uh, our per capita spend with that of other provinces. Listen, uh, at, at this point, uh, at a point of great economic challenge uh, like we're facing today, Alberta can no longer afford to be an outlier in the cost of delivering services. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next question comes from David Staples of the Edmonton Journal. Your line is open. Minister, I have a question about the coming U.S. election. Um, if, the, if you believe the polls, the Democrats are well ahead and put them at risk uh, Alberta's investment in the, uh, in the um, Keystone Pipeline. What are you thinking about that in terms of, I mean, do you have a plan for that or, or what, is, what is the government thinking on this at this point? Well, David, right now we're focused on what we can manage and, and we're working with allied interests uh, in the U.S. and uh, ensuring that uh, we're positioning the Keystone XL project um, as positively as possible. Um, and, and listen, uh, we can have no influence over the U.S. election, but, uh, but we can certainly uh, work at strengthening the narrative that Alberta is key to a sustainable uh, and integrated North American energy approach. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Our next question comes from Michelle Belfontaine of CBC. Your line is open. Oh, hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm curious about the survey um, that you're asking uh, people to, for their input. Um, and does that include input on possible revenue solutions? Um, because, you know, as we all know, we have a revenue problem, and a lot of the, there, there is a, still a, purport, a sizable proportion of um, Albertans that are opposed to a provincial sales tax, for example. But if you were to do a provincial sales tax, I imagine it would be a, a long process. So, so are there any questions in that survey that would maybe make people think about revenue solutions, such as a PST or user fees or anything like that? Uh, well, Michelle, the short answer is yes. Uh, there, there are questions in the survey that um, would prompt a response uh, with respect to Alberta's revenues. Now, now let me be clear. In terms of a, a provincial sales tax, uh, right now to implement a sales tax at a time of great economic challenge, uh, I believe, would, would, be, uh, would just, just create uh, additional hardship at a time when Albertans and Alberta businesses can least afford it. Uh, and, and again, before um, any government would, Im certainly our government would implement a sales tax, we would go to Albertans um, with a referendum to ensure that, uh, that they were uh, in favour of that direction. But with respect to the survey, uh, there are questions uh, regarding revenue. Listen, we're interested in Albertans' perspectives uh, on, on both issues, both sides of the income statement. Operator, <clears throat> can you please put through the next caller? Next question comes from Catherine Gregowski of Alberta Today. Your line is open. Uh, good morning, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Um, as, as we talk on the expense side, um, as we know, a lot of the public sector unions are um, on the cusp of bargaining. Um, are we going to see any legislation this fall related to reining in costs ahead of that bargaining? Well, well, listen. We we are on the cusp of uh, of bargaining with a with a number of uh, public sector unions, and uh, right now I'm I'm certainly not at liberty to to talk about the details of of the government's mandate. I will say this: that I believe that outcomes will need to reflect the economic realities uh, in the province, and they'll also need to reflect the realities uh, that have been experienced in the private sector. Uh, but uh, in terms of additional details, I'm not at liberty to discuss those. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next question comes from Don Bray of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Minister, uh, I'll just ask three quick related questions. Is the health plan uh, announced yesterday subject to change given what you hear? Uh, is the health plan announced yesterday indicative of the kind of thing that's coming in other ministries? And are you entirely happy with the tone of the way things are going? Uh, 
uh, conservatives are breaking off uh, bitterness uh, even even within conservative ranks. One uh, Calgary uh, chair councillor uh, really sounded off on Twitter about what you folks are doing. Um, there you go. Three questions. Well, well, all right. Um, in in terms of the health plan, listen, uh, Minister Shandro is uh, carefully. Uh, implementing a number of the key E and Y uh, recommendations from from the AHS review, uh, and th these are very responsible recommendations. And the minister again is moving forward carefully and thoughtfully, uh, given given the challenge in the healthcare system right now. And and yes, uh, that kind of approach uh, I believe needs to be applied to every ministry. Right now, we need to look for every efficiency uh, in, in delivering government services. Again, on a per capita basis, we are an outlier in terms of our cost uh, to deliver services to Albertans. We can no longer afford to be in. So uh, every ministry will need to take a look at how we can uh, find efficiencies, how we can deliver, um, modernize our, our service delivery and deliver at, at greater value on behalf of Alberta taxpayers. Uh, in, in terms of uh, in, in terms of your last question, listen, we're, we're going to uh, look to make the most responsible decisions on behalf of Albertans. It's a critical time right now. Uh, this, our fiscal challenge is a challenge that is not just facing uh, Alberta's government, it's facing all Albertans as a province. And that's why I'm, I'm very uh, interested in, in seeking uh, the perspectives and ideas of Albertans. I'm looking forward to the tour. Operator, can you please put through the last caller? Final question comes from Chris Varco of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, Minister. I've got a couple of questions as well. Uh, last week, Moody's downgraded the credit rating for the province of Alberta. Based on your discussion, discussions with the other credit rating agencies, do you anticipate more downgrades to be coming in the near future? That's my first question. My second question is, do you have a target for a reasonable deficit figure in 2021, and how are you going to avoid future downgrades? Well, firstly, I'm not aware of any um, additional uh, imminent downgrades. Uh, I can't uh, say with certainty that none will be coming. I mean, let's face it, uh, we're facing a triple black swan event. Uh, we've seen um, revenue destruction um, in this province uh, in an unprecedented way. And right now we're managing um, everything we can manage a as a government. And that's why, again, we're looking at delivering um, government services in the most efficient manner. We're, uh, we're, we're working uh, with what's in front of us. And again, that's also why I'm very interested in seeking the views of Albertans uh, as we look to reset um, a fiscal course starting with budget 2021. In terms of uh, a targeted budget outcome for 2021 at this point in time, again, we're in the consultation phase. We're starting to develop the budget, but uh, stay tuned for budget day for that. And it looks like we just have one more question. So, Operator, can you put through that last question? Our next question comes from Lisa Johnson of the Edmonton Journal. Your line is open. Hi, good morning, Minister. I'm wondering if you're planning on sharing the responses and results of your tour, your town halls, and your online survey publicly after they're complete? Yes, I, I expect that Albertans will be interested broadly in, in the perspective of fellow Albertans, and, and we would be very prepared to share uh, those results. Perfect. Thanks, everyone.